You can call it curiosity, you can call it a healthy dose of human skepticism, but it is in our nature to question why when we come across something. Why do we need to, to know this? Why do we need to study this? Uh, so uh, I want to try and answer that question for our discussion of communication by talking about why we communicate. Why is it that we communicate in general? What's the importance here? Um, so there are a variety of reasons uh, why we communicate, but we kind of categorize them in a couple of, of general um, cross-sections here, categories. So um, first, we communicate to meet physical needs. Even when you look at babies, you can understand when, when you see a baby and they're crying, they're crying for a reason right? There's usually a reason why they're crying. They're crying because they're hungry. They're crying because they're tired. They're crying because they've um, hurt, been hurt in some way. They've injured themselves in some way. Or, um, so th th we, we, as babies even, we communicate through crying. We don't have the words uh, to communicate yet, but we communicate through crying to, to indicate physical needs. We do the same thing as adults when we're hungry. We say, hey, man, I'm really hungry. And we may demonstrate that through nonverbal means as well, right? But we, we communicate to say, I'm hungry. We communicate to say, I'm tired. We communicate to, to meet these physical needs that we have. So that's one reason that we communicate. If you want to start right at the very bottom of the, the, uh, the hierarchy of needs from Maslow, we, we communicate to meet these physical needs. Another reason we communicate is to meet identity needs, uh, both to communicate who we are and, and to shape our identity and to present our identity, identity, uh, but also to discover from others who we are. We, we develop a large part of our identity based on who others tell us we are and, and how they behave around us. And, and we draw inferences and interpretations from that. Um, you know, when we hear over time how good we are at something or how bad we are at something, and that becomes part of our identity or, you know, that we're good looking or that we're a good singer or whatever, um, th that that becomes part of our identity. We communicate both to receive our identity. We, we draw a large part of our identity by communicating with others. And then we also use communication to uh, establish our identity and to, um, to present an identity to the world of ourselves. So we communicate to establish and to, uh, to learn identity needs. We also communicate to, to meet social needs. As, as humans, we are in general social creatures to some extent or the other. Right? Um, some of us are incredibly social. We're very extroverted. We draw energy from being around people and just uh, really have strong desires for the social needs. Others may not have that as strongly, may be more introverted, but that doesn't mean they're not there. At some level, every person has this need uh, for communion with others, to, to be known by others and to know others. And so we, we communicate to meet these social needs. We also communicate to meet just practical needs or what are sometimes known as instrumental needs. When we go to the doctor. You don't just sit down and the doctor says, okay, you look like this is what's wrong with you. So let's treat you for an upset stomach or let's treat you for a headache or let's treat you for a bad knee. No, you communicate that need to the doctor, right? You tell them, well, this is what's wrong with me. This is what's happening. Uh, this is how I'm feeling off or bad or whatever. Uh, and you communicate those things to your doctor. That's a practical need, meeting that need, just telling somebody again, ties in with the physical needs. But, but also when we go to the, uh, the, uh, the, the supermarket or something, we go to the deli counter and, and we want them to know that we want a pound of, of ham and, and half pound of Colby cheese or whatever. We don't just walk up to the counter and expect them to guess that, right? We tell them that fulfills a practical need to identify what it is we want in that situation. Uh, and we could look at it also in other instrumental areas, like how do you determine what you're going to have for dinner? Who's picking up the kids uh, after school or after practice or whatever? And, and how do we make these arrangements for what we're doing this weekend? Those are just basic, practical, everyday things that we communicate in order to, um, to, to meet those needs. So we communicate to meet all of these different types of needs, physical, identity, social, and practical needs. So it's good to ask why it's good that we ask why and we dig in, we get critical with these things and we use critical thinking skills. So hopefully this has helped you identify why we communicate, why it's important that we develop more effective communication skills because it affects a lot of different things in our lives. If you have questions about why we communicate or, or what this has to do with anything, please feel free to email me. I'd be happy to discuss that with you and, and initiate that dialogue and, and engage in that dialogue with you. So feel free to email me. Otherwise, I, I, in the meantime, I hope that you will have a better understanding of why we communicate and why that's important, how that affects our communication uh, in the long run.